Are you Adam? Joel? Yes. Okay, so uh, can you turn your cam on or don't you have any? There we go. I do. I. I'm sorry. I didn't have a camera that it was, that it was available. So. Okay. No problem. All right. So then let's get started with this. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Sports for G. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday afternoon. Um, following this song, Aconcagua, we will be having Joel Graf presenting transportation engineering with free card. So. Uh, is that yours? I will leave them the screen like this. Okay. All right, just a second here. All right, well, uh, and <clears throat> my name is Joel Graff. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the United States, and I work in transportation engineering, highway design, traffic signal maintenance. I've done a number of things in the course of my career. And a couple of years ago, we started getting into where I work, we started getting into 3D design for highway systems. Uh, and 3, 3D design is something that's been a long time in coming to transportation engineering. It's something that's been, been very common in mechanical engineering and various other engineering fields. But in transportation, we haven't needed it so much. Uh, the problem is, 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 and so one of the things that I've been in, involved with most recently is looking at an open source transportation engineering 3D CAD solution. Um, and kind of the reason for that is because traditionally... In, in transportation engineering, we've relied on generally 2D processes. Uh, in the early 90s, when we started moving into uh, CAD-based drawing, the translation from drawing on paper to drawing on CAD was one-to-one. -one. There was really very, the skills were very transferable. It was very direct. Uh, but uh, one of the drawbacks that happened with that, and we'll get to that in a second, is that you went from drawing on pa paper or vellum with, with pencils and ink to drawing on a computer. And not only did you have the capital cost of the computer, but you also had the licensing cost of the software. Uh, and so that w represented a large shift then in the way we do design, uh, which has since become uh, more of a problem, uh, especially with the advent of 3D design. Now, 3D design has given us a great deal of additional uh, value in that we can do 3D scanning and grab uh, data points for very large regions all at once and bring that in and use that for our uh, terrain mapping. Uh, LIDAR, overhead flights from LIDAR, uh, and we can use that in our geomatics or surveys components. Uh, then, and then from there, we can continue to do uh, 3D facility design, like you see in the picture uh, below, by simply drawing a cross-section of the road and sweeping it down a, a predefined alignment to build our 3D road and then merging it with the terrain. And one of the long-term benefits to this is the ability to use uh, BIM-like tools for life cycle maintenance. So not only are we doing the preliminary engineering and the highway design, but that model, once it's complete, then goes to construction. And all of the quantities are built into the model itself. There's no estimations. It's directly from the model. So contractors can build directly from the model. And then after that, in theory, as we maintain the road and prepare it for the next cycle of maintenance, we can update that model with changes that have made, been made to the roadway and use that as the starting point for the next construction project in the area. It's all, all fine and dandy, but it's really a bit of a pie-in-the-sky type of, uh, of, of plan. But it's pretty neat. The problem is, is that when we rely so heavily on these sorts of tools, we're relying on proprietary software. Uh, the market for 3D engineering and transportation, engine, uh, transportation engineering is controlled by principally two vendors. That's MicroStation and Autodesk. Uh, their licensing for it is recurring and expensive, and it's very prohibitive. Uh, prohibitive in that it it's not available everywhere. It's, it's not easily available to smaller agencies that might benefit from the ability to do 3D design, but don't have the budgets to support the licensing, and because it locks you into their proprietary data formats. Now, that's not as so bad of a problem as it was, say, 20 years ago, but it's still an issue. So, in the course of going through this, and I can tell you from my own personal experience with, <clears throat> with one of the products, I found it very lacking in terms of being able to do genuine uh, highway design in a 3D environment. It was very poorly suited for our purposes. I looked at this and I thought, surely there has to be something better. And so I started looking around and I discovered FreeCAD. Um, <clears throat> and, and, uh, and, and I started to explore FreeCAD uh, because I realized that not only were the tools poor, 
but we were locked into these these expensive licensing structures and these proprietary data formats and and it all just kind of sunk into me that you know as professional engineers you went to school you learned your trade you 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 bought your materials and you started doing design right and you could do design by your own by your own ability by your own hand nowadays we have to pay a corporate interest for the privilege to exercise a profession and that should not be the case i should not have to pay substantial sums, sums of money to any particular company or vendor just so I can do professional engineering. So that's really my impetus for doing this. Uh, but also I wanna develop a more intuitive system of doing highway design. So as I explored things and I came across FreeCAD, one of the things that really impressed me is that FreeCAD has all of the elements to build a comprehensive free and open source transportation engineering solution. And I began developing this in 2017. The, the, the module is called FreeCAD Trails uh, and it's built right now entirely in Python. And there's been contributions by industry professionals from all over the world. Uh, so it's really been kind of a neat uh, environment. Not a lot. Of, there haven't been a lot of contributors, but there have been a wide variety of contributors uh, for sure in terms of where we're located and diversity of skills. Now, I was initially focused on highway alignment design, horizontal alignment design, excuse me, uh, and, and that sort of thing. And I was leaving surveys to another time because, frankly, surveys is not my area of expertise. And in that time, a uh, a fellow from Turkey, his name is Hakan, he goes by Hakan7, I think, on the forums, um, who's a geomatics or surveys engineer, stepped up, and he started building a geomatics component for FreeCAD Trails. And let me tell you right now, geomatics is where it's at right now. He's doing some really incredible stuff, and he's in integrating GIS, and we'll get to that in just a second. So FreeCAD Trails right now consists of four key elements, alignment design, swept path analysis, or, or uh, turning template analysis, uh, those two elements I've developed. And then Hakan has worked largely on geomatic surveys. And then more recently, uh, we've had a contribution for GIS and importing GIS tiling and mapping. So when we, so just to go over these components real quick, swept path analysis is just the ability to track a vehicle down a, an alignment and just see where the uh, outer edges of the wheels and outer, outer edges of the vehicle body track so as to determine whether or not you're overrunning you know, curbs or you know, bumping into things or, or making a, a curve too tight that the vehicle has to turn into an opposing lane, that sort of thing. So the idea would be you'd, you'd bring in a, a completed 2D map or something of a 2D uh, plan design of a highway, and then you would simply draw out your alignment and let the vehicle trace that alignment, as you see here in the, in the animation. Uh, so uh, auto, auto turn, I think, is kind of the industry standard. It's Autodesk's tool. Uh, but just in a few uh, in a few months between myself and a german contributor on freecad on the freecad forums we developed this uh, uh, this sort of uh, proof of concept uh, turning swept path analysis tool um, right now it's kind of broken <laughs> but it does work and it was really kind of impressive to see how quickly i was able to develop that using freecad um now i think i have to switch my screen share here where are we at we're 12:37 okay Give me just a second. So um, the other tool that I developed, I hope my screen is visible. Um, it should be. The other tool that, I've, that I was working on was highway alignment design. So this is an example of a highway alignment uh, that I was able to import using land XML format. This is actually a, a section of roadway that's not too far from where I live. Um, and my goal here was to be able to develop an intuitive way of doing highway highway alignment design. And, and one of the things I discovered when I got into FreeCAD is that they're great at drawing lines on the screen, but every line exists as a separate object. And when it comes to editing highway alignments, you're doing a lot of changing and, and, and a lot of pushing and pulling and changing things. And the last thing you want to do is, be, is, is constantly creating new separate individual objects for every little section of roadway. So what I did was I developed a sort of um, intuitive tool that uh, allows you to edit highway alignments. Oh, here, I got to bring up the Trails Workbench. So I developed an intuitive tool that lets you help uh, develop highway alignments. And you basically go into the tool. Oops, something, there we go. This may, I've had issues making this work in, in Streamcast, so this may fail on me here. But basically, you go into this tool, and it highlights all of the points of intersection along the alignment. So these straight lines are the tangents of the alignment, and then this, then the uh, curves of the, of the alignment. 
And by grabbing a single node, you can drag and you can, as you can see there, you can adjust the alignment. And now you see if I make an adjustment and my curves overlap, they turn red, indicating that this is not a valid movement. So here I can very quickly, easily, and intuitively readjust my highway alignment by grabbing basically any element along the alignment, whether it's the curve itself or points on the curve or maybe an entire tangent. And if I hold down a key, I can sit there and rotate the tangent and that sort of thing. And so this was the beginning of my work with FreeCAD Trails and developing an intuitive, easy to use highway design tool. Now this is only 2D, we're not even into 3D yet, uh, but I really had to start from ground zero in order to do that. And I'm just really impressed with how FreeCAD has stepped up and, and really been able to uh, make it easy for me to develop these sorts of tools. The uh, next component is uh, geomatics, and this is what Hakan has been working on. And as you can see here, this is an example file that he's developed where he has uh, created the ability to bring in a 3D data set and skin it with a surface and be able to cut cross sections along it. So if I zoom in here on this 3D data set here and uh, rotate it around a little bit, there we go. Our rotation skills aren't so great, but here you can see there's the actual roadway, the roadway surface. And then underneath, these are the uh, cross-section lines that he has automatically laid out. So if you switch to a top view, you can see how those cross-section lines uh, interact with the roadway. And then, of course, for every cross-section line, there is a corresponding cross-section alongside. So, and these are, this is a very traditional uh, design approach for highway development, especially, uh, especially in uh, surveys. So he's really, he's really creating, uh, uh, he's really creating in FreeCAD the way that we've always gone about doing surveys and highway design. And it's really, really fantastic to see. This is exactly what I would have had to have created if he didn't come along and do it for me. <laughs> and I'm very grateful to have Hakan involved because really, like I say, right now, geomatics is, is where it's at. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, let's cancel out of this. He has some other, the other thing he has, for example, these are also existing terrains that he's brought in. And right now he's working on uh, methods to merge the proposed terrain with the existing, which is an important thing to be able to do, um, create pads or cut some fills and that sort of thing. He's also just recently uh, in a, uh, turn, enabled the ability to import completed surfaces from 3D CAD packages. Before it was you, you had to bring in the, the point set and build the surface in FreeCAD. But now if you've got the surface already in say Civil 3D or something like that, you can export it as a Land XML file and bring it into FreeCAD as a complete surface, which that's really neat to see as well. Um, as long as the Land XML format is supported by a third party, uh, supported by, uh, according to the specification by a third party software, we can bring that data from that third party into FreeCAD because everything really lives and dies in Land XML right now. Um, let's see. Oh yes, and then the other thing that um, the other thing that's happened more recently, and uh, give me just a second here. I need to switch back. That wasn't it. Here we go. I need to reshare a different screen here. Just bear with me. Window, this one. The other thing that we've been doing lately is a, um, is we've uh, been able to incorporate GIS into uh, FreeCAD. Uh, and that has been the work of a user by the name of Dutch Sailor. He goes by Dutch Sailor on uh, GitHub. And um, give me just a sec here. I'm trying to bring up the, there it is. And here on GitHub, you, you under his uh, under his uh, FOSBIM experiments folder, you've got uh, examples of him using FreeCAD to import tiles um, in GIS. So here's a WMS, for example, or Web Feature Service (WFS), Tile Map Service, uh, Web Map Service, um, and then you know setting geographic locations things like that and there's some there's some animated gifs he's even he's also been working with blender gis to make it uh, he's also been working with blender to make it work in the, and it's called blender gis there um so it's really impressive now i've tried to actually use this myself and it doesn't work uh for me and that might be because i don't have access to the servers that he's using he says he says right at the get-go this is proto prototypical he's he only developed this just in the last couple of weeks so it's brand new i mean very brand new right now but it's really exciting to see this level of gis integration into FreeCAD where we've never seen it before uh, so that's something i'm really excited about and i'd love to be able to get that in to be able to use uh 
GIS tile mapping and stuff to lay out alignments and, and do things like that too. Um, so it, free cat trails, it's been, it's been a long time in coming, but we're really starting to see some, uh, some active development going on and really what we're living on and dying on right now are contributors. You know, we need people who show up and, and, and stay at it. Uh, my own time has been kind of tight lately and I haven't been able to do the development I need to, uh, which makes me a little sad, but I'm very glad that Huck on is doing there and that, and that, uh, doing his thing and that we're starting to see GIS integration as well. So, um, with that. I really don't have much else to share. I realize I came up, a, I came up a little bit short of my time. Um, I would be happy to take questions and answers, or maybe try to demo something if anybody's interested. Sure. Thank you for the talk, Joel. Uh, I think ah yeah, we have a question. We can proceed uh, right away. I think that is no problem. So the question is. We're not using we're not using free civil with gas geese for cross section. Maybe should copy it. Uh, I copy it for you in the private chat because I'm not sure how to pronounce. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it? Um, let's see. I do. Oh, hang on. I wasn't scrolled up. Why not use V civil with grass GIS? Why not use V civil with grass GIS for cross section? Grass G Okay. So I know what grass GIS is. V civil, I'm not familiar with. Um, I'll have to look into it. Uh, really, Hakan is just kind of taking this is all Hakan's baby. Um, and he's taking his own approach, but he's using, and, and I'll, I'll address this just a little bit here. What, what Hakan is doing is he's using FreeCAD's built-in objects and techniques and stuff. The, the neat thing about FreeCAD is it's a C++ infrastructure with a Python, or a C++ uh, application with a Python backend, which is pretty common in open source projects. Uh, but they've done a fantastic job of exposing the C++ API almost entirely and literally in Python, which is so useful. And Hakan has been doing a great job just using FreeCAD's built-in objects to build this entire system. Now, why not use vCivil with Grass GIS? Um, again, we I'm not I haven't been involved in the GIS integration, so I can't speak to that. I'm not familiar with what vCivil is, but I'm going to look at it because now I'm curious. But what I can say is that number one, we've been reluctant to bring in any more third-party dependencies than absolutely necessary. FreeCAD itself already has enough uh, third-party dependencies as it is. And as a developer, one of the things I've learned is the less you have to de depend upon a third party uh, for your code, the better the better off. So. If we can get the job done well enough using FreeCAD's built-in uh, systems, uh, it's certainly the preferable way to go. But again, I, I can't speak to vCivil because I have no experience with it. Good question. All right. Thank you. Next question is, uh, does integration with QGIS assist? Does integration with QGIS assist? Yes. That's it. Is it I'm assuming the question is, is it helpful? If that, if that uh, is what the intent is, um, as as far as as far as that sort of integration goes, um, it's we we're already working in uh, we're already working in lats and longs, you know, and and those sorts of things. So being able to incorporate uh, QGIS tiles into our existing system is is a no brainer. Very simple. Uh, so. You know, I, I think it's first off. I think the integration for this is going to go well. It's going to go very well. I, I, I think I, I think probably the integration of GIS is going to be one of the fastest, easiest wins that we're going to fastest and easiest wins that we're going to be able to have in this project, um, just because it's it's already a mature uh, platform, um, and I think it's going to help us as we do development in other areas as well. Partly because it's going to give a lot of aesthetic appeal, a visual visual appeal to the work that we're doing. Um, but it's also just going to be uh, very useful for us as we develop um, as we develop our code base and develop new objects and features and stuff, because GIS will give us a way to sort of check ourselves as we go and make sure that what we're developing actually matches the real world. All right, thank you. Mm, Next one is: It's possible to open existing CAD projects with FreeCAD. 
is it open to Oh, is it open to, is it possible to open what kind of objects? Uh, CID CAD projects with FreeCAD. Can you type that into the chat, please? Because I can't quite. Sure. <laughs> I might not know what these objects are. Maybe I'm not, think, oh, I'm not sure how. CAD project. Okay. I thought you were like giving a, a, an extension or something. Um, uh, no, FreeCAD has its own proprietary data format, and it's actually just a zip file with, you know, a, a, with text files in, inside. Uh, we can import like STL files. If you free, okay. So one of the neat things about FreeCAD is it will import a wide variety of data formats, just a very wide variety. It's really fantastic just in converting between data formats. Um, so a lot of people have used it just for that. Uh, but as far as opening CAD projects, like, you know, a civil 3d CAD project or microstation, you know, one of microstations CAD projects, um, when it comes to proprietary formats, no, absolutely not. If that CAD data is converted to a land XML file, what, like what we're doing with transportation engineering, then yes, we're able to at least at this point pull some of that data in. Thank you very much. And last question. What about data storage and sharing between FreeCAD and GIS? Yes. I missed the it. first half of the question. Something about. Do I sound laggy or I don't know? I can't hear myself. <laughs> I'm copying it for you. I'm sorry. About about data that. storage and sharing. Okay. What about data storage? What about data storage and sharing between FreeCAD and, and GIS? Um, right now, as far as if you're talking about real time, if you're talking about real time interactivity between FreeCAD and GIS, as long as as long as there's a Python backend on the third party thing a bridge can be built i've seen people use inkscape to to use inkscape to draw vectors in real time import them into freecad and you can see freecad be manipulated as you do the work in, in inkscape so you can share data directly and and literally if you take the time to build a python bridge between the two applications um, otherwise right now when you're talking about bringing data in from gis you're talking about uh, importing static files. So if the file updates in GIS, you're not going to see that reflected in FreeCAD. Uh, as far as data storage goes, I'm not exactly sure what that refers to. Okay. Thank you very much for answering the questions. We don't have any, any more. Okay. So I guess that we can finish here. Thank you for the talk, Joel. Um, I guess that we will see you around in Phosphor G. Right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.